Um, so Corey's going to do the questioning and I'm going to try and answer. So first of all, we're at CES, <laughs> CES 2023. We have a booth here. So if you're at CES and maybe watching this, it's booth number 3247. We have a lot of great yeah. giveaways that we've been handing out. Not only these lanyards, but these bags. So if you're here and in the area, come find us. And now, Sandy, let's talk about what we've seen so far at CES. We've been swamped here at the booth, but you've talked to probably 100 people so far. Uh, yeah, at least. So here's the deal. Um, I had no idea we were going to get as much, uh, as much of a crowd as what we have because we're in a <clears throat> not the spot we picked. Um, and then over here, I'm looking at a bunch of offices that they decided to plunk in, which kind of holds us back a bit. But I will tell you that um, the uh, the response to us being here is phenomenal. I I I wasn't I didn't know what to expect, but uh, certainly this has been a pretty pretty amazing experience. We've done a couple of videos. I've uh, been interviewed uh, two or three times. Uh, one time, actually, just a few minutes ago, as I was coming back with my coffee, I got an interview on the run, literally. No the guy, Yeah, the guy is, uh, I don't know the name of the company. I, I didn't get a card off of them. And they gave me my things back. They're all knotted up. So uh, I'll spend some time trying to undo that. But anyway, it was, this has turned out to be a pretty good show. I'm yeah. pretty happy. And yeah. there's uh, somebody else we're going to be uh, going to be getting uh, getting in touch with as well. Yeah. Dave Augustine. Welcome. Sandy, how you been? I've been well, yeah. But uh, go ahead. We, yeah. We're live. We're live right now. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of people coming by the booth, particularly for Sandy. And we've also gone out on the show. So I had a, the luxury of interviewing the director of styling for Zooks. So Zooks is a fully autonomous vehicle. That was really cool. What have you seen when you're out here? What are you looking forward to? I know Stellantis <clears throat> is going to reveal yeah. the RAM. What are you looking forward to, Sandy? I'm I'm looking forward to seeing um, stuff that is going to be exciting for me. So um, when I found um, uh, when I found out that um, Thomas from um, what is the name of that company? We're Pro. We're, We're Pro. Pro. Yeah, uh, we just did an interview with him. It was really stimulating. It's really long, but uh, but I was looking for what's what's going to happen with software. So they've got they've got a tremendous. Uh, I don't want to give it away, but They've got a tremendous um, um, focus on what the future is going to be. So that was one thing. The other thing I was hoping to see <clears throat> was uh, was what what's happening with trucks, big trucks. So uh, down here is Caterpillar. John Deere has already come to visit and uh, talk about maybe how we can help them out with some work. That is why we come here. We didn't come here to just do videos. We came here to find out whether or not we can um, sell our products. And uh, I think that uh, I think that what I see is is going in a good direction. So John Deere came and seen us. Um, um, who else was uh, the so uh, a bunch of companies? Packard, with, yeah, yeah, a bunch of companies with only two ear two wheels. So we had yeah. uh, two small electric motorcycle companies come up and ask, "Hey, when are you going to get into tearing down a small electric motorcycles?" I know it's well, something yeah, we've considered. Lacey, yeah, yeah, remember uh, yeah. Uh, Miss Ed. Miss Go Electric. Miss Go Electric. Anyway, she um, uh, she has a bunch of these things, and, and I did a, a program with her, which had a lot of good press, and I said, hey, we should take some of these apart, but then we got busy and started traveling, so we didn't do it. So I think that uh, I think that electric vehicles in general should be looked at, and I can't believe how many electric vehicles are here. Not this show. It, this is not like last year where there was virtually nothing. Yeah. Yeah, the turnout is definitely much better this year. We're so far removed from the COVID protocols of last year that it's yeah, really kind of nice yeah, yeah. Uh, to be here. And now let's go Let's go to some questions. So I have a few questions for you, but I'm going to ask Eric. Eric, do we have any questions from people who are watching live? Anything <clears throat> or no? No questions. Okay, good. Well, your wife said hi. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So if anybody's out nice there time. and you have any questions for Sandy and I, We'll try and relay that to us, but especially Lily, if she's got any so questions. Um, here's I'll a be question. Happy to I, here's a question I have for not only you but our viewers. What vehicles do you want to tear down this year on Monroe Live? What vehicles do you want? Well, let's see. What do I want, or what am I think I'm going to get? What I'd really like is the um, is the uh, Tesla Cybertruck. Yeah, I definitely want that. Um, we had arguments about whether the Tesla Roadster would be a good idea, and it's been put on the back burner but we are if we can afford it if we can sell enough of the stickers 
um, we want to try and get the uh, uh, semi, semi. The, the Tesla semi. Um, and that's the other thing. Packar and a couple of the other uh, big truck companies are here showing off what they've done with um, with electric and uh, and uh, hydrogen or sorry fuel cell electric. So hydrogen and electric. So that that that's encouraging. That's the kind of that's the kind of vehicle that I think is worthy of a. Uh, yeah, uh, hydrogen. Do you think we finally should get a GM product on the Ultium platform? Maybe a Lyric or a Blazer? No, the one I want is the is that other one that's like three hundred thousand bucks. The uh, Celestique. The Celestique. Yeah, why don't that's you go? That's the one I, I really. You, yeah. Why don't you go into a little bit about what you thought about the casting for the Celestique? So for people yeah. who didn't see that video. Yeah. Uh, the when you when you do a low volume product like the uh, Celestique, uh, uh, and you want to go with castings. You have to go in a totally different direction than um, these high pressure die castings and stuff like that. And I think that's the first car that GM has put out that I'm really enthusiastic about. I would really like to uh, get into that. But at $300,000, if I have a choice between <clears throat> the Tesla, uh, 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 what do you call it, Semi, and the Celestique, I. I know which one I'm going to have to do, but I know which one I'd really like to get into from General Motors. By the way, there's other vehicles that I'm looking at since running around in here, and uh, one of them is the Polestar. Um, I got a brief introduction to what's going on with that. I like the idea, and I, I'd really like to maybe get something going there. Any the other one? Uh, the other one is uh, is the um, is the um, the three-wheel vehicle, the Aptera. Aptera. Yeah. yeah, I think I'd like to get into the Aptera. I'd like to tear that apart, show everybody how much, how clever this thing is. I mean, we're actually working on it. We're, we've helped design it. We've helped find suppliers. We've helped with the design of the factory. <clears throat> but we'd, we've never, I'd, I'd really like to, you know, show the world. So uh, yeah. I'll get Steve and, and uh, Chris to maybe... Uh, Maybe sell us one or something yeah. and, and get going on it. Maybe we can even take a prototype. Yeah. That. Now let's let's shift a little bit to battery technology. So we actually had solid power come yeah. up to us. Yeah. And they gave us. Uh, they showed well, they it didn't, to us. They didn't give it to us. They showed us one of their prototype EV yeah, cells. Right. So solid power is here with their solid state battery, semi right. solid state. I don't know. What no, it no. Is. It, he says it's solid state. Yeah. And I believe him. So when we went to look at QuantumScape. Um, the videos out there and um, and um, uh, forgotten his name. Jagdeep Singh. Jagdeep, yeah. Jagdeep said, like I said, I looked at your process and this isn't solid state, maybe semi solid state, but not solid state because they have a catholite. Frankly, they have a catholite. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so um, he says, well, yeah, I guess so. At the end of the day, the big thing, as far as I'm concerned, is that these guys have figured out. The magic that it takes in order to get to solid state. Why do I want to have solid state? Because that is the only uh, technology that will uh, basically eliminate our problem, or let, let me rephrase that, the range problem will disappear because they hold more power than anything and they're lighter. So, so gravimetric and volumetric gravimetric, advantage. Yeah, exactly, yes. both. Yeah. So you can either have the same amount of energy in less weight and volume or more energy in the same amount of volume that you currently yeah, have. But it would still be less weight because from what I can gather and what I, I've heard, the um, the ability for them to hit weight targets that are unattainable with um, the standard 4680 or 2170 or any of the LG packs yeah. and whatnot or anybody else's pack, that giant change will come from. and. As I've mentioned several times, weight is a huge factor when it comes to uh, when it comes to range. You want to have range. Figure out how you make the the, the, the product lighter. So there's there's weight. There's uh, efficiencies inside the vehicle. There's um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, aerodynamics. I mean, a lot of the vehicles that I've seen today really um, I can't take advantage of the aero simply because of the way that yeah. they're big trucks or something like that. These are the things, and then the other one's friction. So friction, um, friction for big trucks and uh, and whatnot. That's always going to be a problem. 
arrow is always going to be a problem, but weight is something, if we can figure out how to come up with something that's lighter than the standard, um, um, even dry cell batteries that uh, the 4680 is looking at, um, we're going to we're going to ultimately wind up with more range. Now I have a I have a question for you, Sandy. <coughs> Normally I shy away from these topics, but I think our viewers uh, really want to politics. Know. Yes. Oh my God. So 2023, a lot of people are saying they're uncertain about the economy and what it's going to look like. What do you think the automotive industry? How is it going to react to whatever happens in 2023? Well, um, actually. Uh, I, I think that uh, the first quarter in 2023 is going to be absolute crap. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be rubbing their chin, wondering whether or not uh, the auto industry in general is going to make it. And certainly anybody that, uh, that's uh, thinking that uh, the electric vehicle, they're going to be rubbing their chin and probably a lot of them are going to run away. That's what, uh, that's what they do in New York. Um, they run away. Uh, they don't like any risk whatsoever, and if somebody's going to give them more money in a in a bond, they'll go for it. After this, actually into the second quarter, I think that I think that people are going to realize that either we're going to go with electric, or we're going to get swamped with um, with uh, a lot of problems, and those problems are all going to come from China because China is not going to stop. China is throwing more money at their electric vehicles, and if we kill any of them, any of the vehicles that we kill in the United States will lessen our ability to uh, lessen our ability to compete in the world. And uh, I believe that, uh, well, I know that uh, even countries like Saudi Arabia are creating their own vehicles. I just saw the uh, Canada's got their own vehicle. Uh, everybody on the planet is getting their own vehicles. And if, if New York wants to create a, another depression. And that's basically how they did the last one, right? That was the bank meltdown. That wasn't anything to do with automotive. Yeah. That was all to do with a bunch of yeah, terrible banking situations. And I, again, I go back to New York. Yeah. And the prospects of developing an automotive company in the 21st century is a lot different than it was in the 20th yeah. century because the legacy OEMs had a huge advantage with powertrain development of V8s, V6s, decades or almost 100 years of expertise now that electric motors and batteries have been commoditized a company in uh, a company like sear in saudi arabia can can launch a vehicle without having to have all that internal expertise so what's your exactly. thought thought about that of the vestigial oems like mercedes and bmw they're now making a real nice <coughs> shift in yeah. evs and they're essentially they have their brand loyalty and their quality what do you think about the german oems i think uh well, the two German OEMs that you talked about are the two that I think the will, yeah, the yeah, premium fine. cars, they, they definitely are not going to have a problem. Um, they do have um, a loyal following. They make really good cars. And we just heard that BMW <coughs> has decided that they are going to abandon ship on uh, their, I'm not going to steal anything from what I yeah. had in the other one, but they're going to abandon ship on the, uh, <coughs> on the, um, the system that they're using, the language that they're using inside their car, they're gonna abandon ship on that and they're gonna move to something else. And I think- From Linux to Google. Yeah, it is, uh, but I wasn't gonna mention the name. So there you go. Ah, Sorry. Can't keep a secret around here. Anyhow, so um, yes, and moving from Linux was a good move. I mean, I don't understand why they went in that direction to start off with, but moving from that to Google is a brilliant, a, a, a game changer and a brilliant move. This is going to allow them to have, uh, you'll be able to change everything inside your car using apps. They, uh, this is going to facilitate um, edge computing. I don't want to get into that, but in essence, latency is the biggest problem associated with electronics and whatnot. How fast can I move? And BMW is going to lead, I think, I think they may lead the pack in that. Mercedes, I've looked at some of the stuff, talked to some of their people here. I, I'm encouraged by what I hear. And then there's other uh, German uh, companies, and I don't think they're going to do as well. Yeah. And in the U.S., I think uh, Ford is the clear w – well, let me rephrase that. Tesla is not going to go bankrupt. Anybody that tells you that doesn't know squat. Tesla dominates on – the only thing that will kill electric vehicles in North America is going to be chargers. And believe me, 
after listening to my wife complaining heavily about trying to charge our Rivian at a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Don't say the name. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. The biggest, the one we paid billions of dollars for. Um, and there was 12 or 14 chargers and not one of them would work. And not one. And that's what's going to kill EVs is lousy chargers. And I looked here today, I've looked around yeah. it, and there's a ton of new charging companies. And uh, actually, we're going to be talking with ABB a little later this week. And uh, they're another company that's really moving ahead. But guess who's got all their chargers working all the time? Tesla. Tesla. I don't care what anybody in New York says. They don't own cars anyways. I don't care about those people. They can, they can short sell all they want. At the end of the day, Tesla is not going to go bankrupt. And right behind them, in uh, in uh, second place, a rock solid second place is Ford Motor Company. Yeah, Sandy, when you take a road trip, you own a Rivian. But I noticed when I visited over Christmas break, you had the Tesla Model Three. And the reason for that because is because my wife says we will never, and that was a big word. Never. My wife is a, a doctorate in engineering, two master's degrees, and she graduated from GMI near the top. Yeah. My wife is an engineer's engineer. And she said, we will never, never take a road trip in anything but the Teslas. That's, that's hard, hard words. And the reason isn't because she doesn't love the Rivian, because that is her truck. But she can't afford to take a chance on the crappy charging systems that are uh, sitting out there. And by the way, um, uh, if you uh, uh, go to out of spec, uh, Kyle did Kyle Connor, absolutely... Yeah. Kyle Connor did an absolutely brilliant job on showing just how bad other chargers are and just how good the Tesla charger is. So, yeah. uh, so that's that's kind of like uh, what's going on with that. And thinking back to 2021, <laughs> we left the Monroe headquarters on our 8,000 mile journey without even really thinking about or planning our charge stations. We just put Malibu, California in the computer and it just mapped our whole way out. We right. drove no no qualms no worries no questions whatsoever through cold weather through storms well that's the thing yeah so we went up the mountains the rocky mountains and came down the other side we went up to the top of the mountains and we had like 10 percent left but then going down yeah, we basically yeah, we, got we got we got a whole bunch back yeah and then and then as we were getting into the desert um we were running out of steam we were like five percent so the car said hey you know what you're not going to drive at 80 anymore because I was driving at that time and it dropped it down to 55 or something like that. And the heat, um, we, we didn't have it. We couldn't have it at 72. It dropped down to about 65, 65 or something like that. But you know what? When we pulled in, the, uh, the bar was all, it was red. There was nothing there. It was just a little red line. And it said, oh, you have 10 or 15 more miles to go. We drove in, plugged in, ran to, uh, because... We were in Reno. We were, we were in Reno, and, and that storm that was dumping like three feet of snow in back of us, we, we had just enough time to uh, have something to eat, hit the restroom, and get back on the road again. And the Tesla was already charged up at 90%, boom, ready to go. And that was just with one meal. So with Tesla's stuff, it's impossible to beat. Anybody, any car company that's going to put hang their hat on... Uh, on uh, yeah. on charging systems, they better uh, they better think real long and hard about uh, about who they're going to recommend to their customers to get a, a charging situation that isn't going to leave them stranded someplace. It's not range anxiety has nothing to do with the car. Nothing to me. Range anxiety is the charging system. Yeah, yeah. cool. So I'm going to quick check with Eric. Eric, do we have any questions online or no? A couple. Come back yeah. So we could get. Well, we got a question right here, John. A, no, hang on. Come on in here. I'll give you the give you the camera. Come here. Right, so we got a look at the camera. All right, over there. Introduce yourself. Oh, okay, I'm John. I live in Las Vegas, but we drive back and forth to Vermont every year in the Tesla. Yes. And we've never had a problem. We've done it like five years in a row. Yeah. The other, I have a question though. Yes. So I'm. I've ordered a Cybertruck. So did I. Five and, of them. And oh, well, I only ordered one. <laughs> yes. So, I'm 
wondering, do you think some, if I own that for two years, will somebody or Tesla come out with a much better one or will I be happy with it after two Well, here's one of the things that's nice about Tesla. The car you bought today is going to last for, I don't know, 400,000 miles. But you know what? The reason that you want to have a, a, an electric vehicle of any kind, it, you, there's no maintenance. It, it doesn't wear out. Your brakes, I, I mean, I listened to some guys in England telling me how the, the brakes are going to fail and stuff. You don't use the brakes. You're using regen all the time. That means that your tires don't go flat. When you jam on the brakes, that that action tears the tires to pieces. But if you use regen, it doesn't. So your your brakes last longer. Your tires last longer. You're you're never going to wear out the uh, the uh, the powertrain system. The batteries, that stuff about batteries yeah. dying in one, that's all baloney as well. And Sandy, the software updates, the and vehicle the continue thing. to update. Right. The so when you get the car for five or six or 10 years, nothing mechanical is going to go wrong. Plus, you're going to get updates continuously from the, not just Tesla, but any electric vehicle company. They're going to give you updates that's going to make your car like brand new every, every pretty much every month. Got mine wrapped in something called tangerine dream. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> All right, next next question. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Oh. Uh, thank you. Wait, question. Wait, wait. Do you have, do you have any comments on? Uh, hang on, hang on. I'll get. Oh, you got it. Come okay. up here. Come up here. Yeah. Okay. He's got a Tesla hat. He's probably promoting. Go Tesla. ahead and introduce yourself. Wait. Hi. I'm Jack Kasanke from Spokane, Washington, and I have a question. Would do you like to make any comments on the tax credit for the Model Y? <laughs> if I make a comment, he's going to kick my ass. He may even throw my ass. The tax credit, the seventy five hundred. Yeah, the, the tax the credit. Tax credit. Yeah, for it's, the it's a non-tax credit. Here's the deal: you can buy a car that will get you twenty-one miles of electric vehicle, and then it turns into a diesel truck. Okay, and to me. That gets the $7,500 deal, but a Tesla doesn't? Are you kidding me? I believe that the $7,500 bonus or whatever is strictly for UAW cars, period. And, um, and that's a little provocative. Corey is probably having a semi-heart attack right now, but that's the way it is. The president won't even say the name Tesla, won't won't say the name Elon Musk, because why? Because yes. I, I, here's the tale. I, I'm not going to tell you. I want everybody who's watching go to the uh, go to your uh, uh, your Google and type in how much money does the UAW give to the Democratic Party, and then type in how much money. Does the UAW give to the Republican Party or any other party for that matter? When you've got when you've got a president that's bought and paid for, uh, you know it's hard for me to stay uh, not emotional. I, I'd rather thank you for your thank you for your time, Jack. Get the <laughs> hell out of this. <laughs> but you know, Tesla's the most American-made car that's built in this country, right? And that's the thing that you want to support. No, it, no, no, not if you're getting your money from the UAW. Okay. If I'm paying you money, are you going to say something good about the competition? Hell no. I can't think of anything. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, this is something I don't want to get into. It's yeah. highly charged. I'm sure that there's uh, 10,000 people that have already uh, dumped uh, Monroe and Associates off their, uh, off their list because of what I just said. But it is all true. It just seems shocking to me, pun intended, that... Uh, that uh, that a car like that would be left out that benefits the American people, probably more than any other. These are interesting times. All right. Thank uh, you, Sandy. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Oh my gosh. All right, we have another question. Here you go. Come, on. Chris. I'll uh, I'll make it a technical question. Thank instead God. Of, instead of a political question. Don't so bring him up anymore. Okay. Okay. So uh, my name is Chris Thompson. I'm head of product for a company called Solar Edge, and we're the largest solar inverter company in the world. Cool. So I'm really interested in, in topics like vehicle to grid um, because there's a lot I think a vehicle can do to stabilize the grid and really increase the penetration of solar or other intermittent yeah. assets. So kind of my, my question for you is a little bit like what are your thoughts on 
like the million mile battery because I, I think vehicle vendors may right now maybe don't want you discharging or charging every day because of the wear and tear on the battery. Uh, do you think that's a significant issue or do you think we need to wait for next generation of batteries before vendors will kind of no, un unleash I think, that capability? I think, I think um, LG, uh, Samsung, everybody that's in the battery industry, they already have a million mile batteries. Okay. I mean, they're there already. Tesla already proved it. They've got, they've got customers that have got half a million, three quarters of a million, million miles, no problem there. They, 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 it'll work. As long as you don't do s stupid things, they, they'll be working fine. It's like I can, I can take a, a nice vehicle and I can get a half a million miles out of it, but you have to change the oil, yeah, you know, and things like that. Same thing with batteries. You have to treat them kindly and they'll, they'll, they'll do what they need to do. But as far as like uh, charge the grid, I'm a big fan. And uh, I'm telling you, everybody at Monroe's a big fan. Yeah, I agree. And, that, and that's because of the lightning saving our ass. We had people coming in from all over the world for a big giant workshop. And that night we had a big storm and the big storm kicked out our power and we plugged everything into the lightning and suddenly the whole shop was uh, was illuminated. We It saved our, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars it was for these people. They were flying in from China, Japan, Korea, uh, all over in Europe, all over the United States and Canada for this big deal and now they, they phoned up and said, hey, uh, there's no uh, there's no lights on in our hotel. Are you guys going to be OK? Yeah, we've got a lightning. <laughs> and you know what? Everybody says, oh, yeah, well, what happens when it is discharged? OK, so every night, Andrew, our guy, Andrew V, he'd get into it. He'd drive outside of the uh, our area, charge it up all night because we have two uh, two texts and Come he back. charged it up That's all awesome. night and then got dropped off by uh, by one of the other guys uh, J, uh, I don't know who it was but somebody Justin. dropped Justin. Justin Justin dropped him off and then in the morning Justin picked him up drove him over he picked up the lightning brought it to work and boom we plugged it in before everybody showed up and again so it was three days I Let's think it was it. three days that uh, that we had the lightning basically uh, lighting our our light uh, our, our, our lights and whatnot inside the factory so, so why do you think uh, Tesla hasn't announced that because they, they've I have got no such idea. good inverter capability, storage. Well, you know, the reason they can't do it right now is because on the um, the EC the the electronic control module on the um, Char I think it's ACDC module? yeah, yeah ACDC um, um, controller that that has diodes and what I need is trans transformers. And if you could yeah. take that board out and rip out the diodes and put in transformers and put it back in there, it could do it in both directions as well. I have no idea why they decided not to do that. It would have been a, a great move. And hopefully uh, when I get my cyber truck, they're going to make a big announcement saying that they're going to spend an extra, uh, guessing off the top of my head, 40, 40 or 50 bucks to put in transformers on the... Uh, Transistors. And, uh, then put in transistors and get rid of, uh, well, they got to get rid of the diodes. That's about 50 cents. So, but, you know, one of my thoughts on that is technologically, it's easy to make it bi-directional by going to MOSFETs yeah. on the front end or something. Uh, well, the MOSFETs of, are there. But there's a lot there. of regulations around doing it. It's easy to take power off the grid, putting it back on the grid. You got UL 1741, yeah, SS. Yeah. So maybe well, there's, go, go through no, the there's regulatory. The easy way is you just take, <clears throat> that's the, the lightning's got a 220 plug. Yeah. You just take that, plug it in, and you plug it into your house and you turn off the power. And then it's the same to, thing, yep. and you don't have any any problems whatsoever. It's the exact same thing that you'd do if you had a Honda generator, okay, or any kind of generator. Actually, he has a gas generator at his house for when the power goes out. When the power goes out, the generator goes on. As soon as there's any kind of, because I had one in Canada, as soon as it detects any kind of current coming back through the grid, it shuts system. off. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing could be true. It's like simple, easy peasy, easy, easy to do that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. The of the show. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, thank you. Yeah. Anything from uh, the peanut gallery? Yeah, anybody from outside? Except well, for the people who people said. I want to know what you think of the boring company. All right. So the, <laughs> the, the, boring company. the question is, what do you think about the boring company? Okay. So um, I've been a fan of tunnels ever since I worked at Ford Motor Company. 
when I saw what Henry Ford did with tunnels, and by the way, when, when I first went, went to work for Ford, I worked at the uh, Windsor engine plant. And the Windsor engine plant was actually two engine plants and an office building and a powerhouse and a foundry. They were all connected with tunnels. I couldn't believe it. I didn't have to go outside for anything. I could go through those tunnels and they were wide enough. In the old days, they used to make cars at that factory. They were wide enough that it had a monorail system that you could bring cars through. Never had to worry about rain or, or snow or any other damn thing. It was always brilliant. I love tunnels. I think that that's the right way to go. So I think the boring company, I mean, we, isn't there, there's a, there's a link between different, uh, different things here in, in uh, Las Vegas where yeah, you can, the tunnels, we yeah, rode the tunnels. Them, the yeah, we, tunnels. we rode in them and, and they, I think it was brilliant. Yeah. yeah I'd say that, uh, having the tunnels along with, um, along with self-driving vehicles. So you don't have to have, they just come up, stop, you get in and they take off again. And for that kind of thing, I, I can't imagine why we, we don't have it everywhere. It'd be great if we had it in Detroit. We'd go from the airport to the city center without having to uh, fight uh, 94 traffic. So, Eric, any other questions from the peanut gallery? Uh, quantum scale. Do you think their batteries will end up in cars? So the question is, yeah. do we think that quantum scapes batteries will end up in cars? Well, I think um, eventually. I think I think that they've already got a few contracts, and um, whether they're semi-solid or solid state. Um, I looked at what they had, the, the chemistry is there. Um, it's, it works. I saw that, that it does work and, uh, it may weigh a little bit more, but it, uh, there's, and it, it'll perform. Still an advantage it's because, still a big yeah. advantage because it's, it's a dry cell, basically just like that uh, 4680 right there. Yeah, um, it's it. a dry cell battery and, um, yeah, I'm sure that it's going to be in cars. All right. So. I'll just wrap things up now. So we're in Vegas, uh, CES 2023 <coughs> until Sunday. Uh, we're going to be doing tons of content. So if you're out there right now watching this live stream, we have a lot of non-live stuff that we're filming. Um, Sandy, you have probably six or 10 things planned for the rest of the day. If you are yeah. in Vegas, please come visit us at our booth, booth number 3247. We'd love to see you, ask questions, talk with Sandy. We've had tremendous turnout on the first day. I'm really looking forward to a lot of events that we have throughout the week. Um, if you're out there watching, stop on by. Any last words, Sandy? Yeah, I'm going to be doing, um, I didn't get a chance to walk around a heck of a lot. I want to find out why I walked by Blackberry three times now, and it's packed with people. I mean, packed. There is no room to breathe. I want to see what's going on there. I want to see, I went up to the Caterpillar. Um, they've got a huge truck, a huge mining truck, and I've asked four of their people. Is, is this an electrified mining truck? And none of them knew the answer. I, I think that uh, that's criminal, but maybe tomorrow I can get somebody yeah. that, that, that has an answer for that. Yeah. I really want to know about that kind of stuff. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cruise around. Maybe I'll wear a false mustache. Well, I got a mustache. False, mustache? false beard. You should wear one of the glasses Oh, you know what? If I shave my mustache oh. off, nobody, nobody will know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So before we sign off, I want Grace, our video camera operator show people the booth you know grab pick that thing up and point so we have a really nice booth with a 14 foot screen this thing can turn just go over here sandy yeah look at this huge screen you know oh naturally he wants it right oh, there no, no. oh look at that and uh, turn around and show the crowd we have uh, about 15, 10 15 people here a lot of monroe live fans and uh, we have these great monoliths that we put together so <laughs> the booth is pretty cool it's the first time we've had a booth at ces so once again stop on by Anything else, Sandy? Yeah. The big question that I had, which didn't come up, was when are you going to interview Elon Musk again? Um, that may be coming soon. So I'll leave you with that. Do you slide into his DMs? Do you even know what Bye, that means? all. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. All right. There you go.